Boating is fun, but it can also be dangerous. In fact, the fun day out on the water can turn deadly if you aren't familiar with all the Coast Guard guidelines and have all the proper equipment. Every year, boat passengers fall overboard, boats break down at sea, boats catch fire, and they sink. But none of these emergencies need to be life-threatening. Today, we're gonna share with you the important guidelines we follow and the gear we keep on board to keep us, our guests, and our precious cargo safe. Hey y'all, welcome to the Sea All Life. I'm Andrea, this is Tom, and we have two pups. We're a couple of Texas transplants living the empty nest life to the fullest. For us, that's living part-time on our 44-foot Defever trawler in San Diego. Our hope is that as you join us on our dreams and adventures, we'll inspire you to discover your own. We frequently take both small and large groups of friends and family out on the water, and we always go over the safety guidelines before we pull out of the slip. That includes where the life vests and the fire extinguishers are located. We've outfitted Sea All with everything that we need to boat safely. Keep in mind that the regulations vary depending on the size of your boat and where you live. So first, be sure to be familiar with the Coast Guard guidelines. We'll add a link below for the information that you need. Then second, you need to become familiar with your own state's guidelines because they do vary. The U.S. Coast Guard recently released its 2020 Boating Statistics Report and the results were very interesting. There were 767 boating fatalities that year alone, which is a 25% increase over the year before. In addition, the number of accidents and non-fatal injuries also increased about 25%. The sharp rise in each of these can certainly be attributed to the huge number of new boaters during the pandemic, but still the figures are staggering. Now this is important to note, in a vehicle you're only going to get pulled over for an infraction, but that's not the case with boating. You can be pulled over at any time for an inspection, and if you don't have the right equipment on board, you're going to get sent back to land and you might get fined. Personal flotation devices are one of the most important pieces of equipment on your boat. You need one appropriately sized PFD for each person aboard. This type of PFD is great because it keeps both the nose and the mouth above water if you're unconscious. We recommend adding a light and a whistle to each vest. The light is water activated, but you can also turn it on manually. The Type 2 PFDs like this one um, as Tom said, are the kind that keep your nose and mouth above water, even if you're unconscious. This is a Type 3 PFD, and although it is Coast Guard approved, and it's definitely one that people need to use because it's not bulky, so it's, it's good to use when you're in a regatta, or canoeing, or skiing. However, it will not keep your mouth and your nose above water if you are unconscious. Not only do you need to have enough personal flotation devices aboard for everyone on your boat to have one, but they also need to be easily accessible and ready to use. This is what you'll see on a lot of people's boats and this it's not ready to use. In an emergency the non-boating guests that are on your boat might panic or they may not be thinking clearly and so you've got to be prepared in advance so that these things are ready to go. To do that you need to remove each of the vests from the bag. Notice it coming right out of the bag. This is definitely not ready to use. No one's head's gonna fit through there. The belt is cinched tight, and there's a tag on the back. So we're gonna remove the tag, which by the way, has some very important information on it that you ought to look over. Then we're gonna loosen the belt. Then we can wrap the belt back around it loosely, and it'll be ready to store back in the bag. It's fine to keep them in this bag. They just need to be ready for use and not cinched up tight not ready to use. Once all the life vests have been pulled out, loosened up so they're ready to go, I put them back in the bag for easy storage and we keep all of our life vests up here on the flybridge underneath the benches. I'm going to store one of the pamphlets from the life vest in the top of each of my bags so that they're handy to refer to in case of an emergency. And don't forget that every child under 13 must be wearing a life vest at all times, so we keep a few uh, kids' 
size life vest and we also have more of an infant size life vest aboard as well. And if you don't have everything you need on any given day, uh, we've been known to borrow what we needed from friends. If we had more kids than we expected, we make sure we've got enough of these so each child has one on. And don't forget your boat dogs, PFD. This is Rosie's brand new little mermaid life vest, and I love that it comes with a handle. If she were to fall in, we could just pluck her right out. And it's a great idea to add your pet's name, your name, and your phone number to the life vest. In addition to the PFDs, you also need a throwable device. The other thing you should do is practice man overboard drills. That's something where people are not prepared when that happens and if you don't do a drill you won't be prepared either. Next on the list are fire extinguishers. Now be sure you do the research so you can understand how many of these you need on board based on the size of your boat. Once you have the number of fire extinguishers you need for your boat be sure to place them in all the various locations you're going to need throughout the vessel. Now properly using a fire extinguisher sounds like a no-brainer but most people I've talked to have never actually been in a situation where they had to use one. In fact, I'm one of those people. Be sure to read the label on your devices. They come in all types. Once activated, a fire extinguisher only discharges for about 10 to 20 seconds. That means you need to aim precisely at the base of the flame. Use the acronym PASS whenever you are using a fire extinguisher. The P stands for pull the pin. The A stands for aim the fire extinguisher towards the base of the fire. That's probably the biggest mistake that people make. They're just shooting at the fire. You want to hit the base of the fire. S, the first S stands for squeeze the fire extinguisher. Squeeze the trigger together. Pull, push down and pull up. The final S is for sweep where you're aiming at the base of the fire and you're moving back and forth. Fire extinguishers have different ratings. Not all are the same. The best kind of get is the ones that are rated for A, B, and C type fires. A would be wood or paper, B would be liquids, chemicals, and C would be electrical. You can find the ratings at the base of the fire extinguisher. Another type of fire extinguisher that's also A, B, and C rated is a Halon fire extinguisher. More expensive, normally used in aircraft, and if you have a fire um, suppression system in your engine room, it's Halon um, chemical based. These fire extinguishers are good for about 12 years after they're manufactured. So if there's not an expiration date printed on your extinguisher, then make sure you get a sticker where you write the date of purchase. And then every season, you wanna check them all and make sure they're all in working order and not expired. Next on the Coast Guard list are visual distress signals basically flares for day and nighttime purposes and also a flare gun. We've got a little flare happy over here. We have a lot of different types of flares. The orange one that has a sun on it would be obviously for daytime and this would just be a smoke signal. The red one, it has a sun and a moon. It would admit a bright light 700 candle power and some smoke with it. Of course, read the label on all of these it is very important though that for a handheld flare you're only gonna light this flare when you see somebody and you're trying to get their attention because this burns for only three minutes and the smoke orange one only burns for a minute. Igniting a flare is like striking a match. Pull the cap, pop the top, and you rub the two pieces together just like you would with a match. And water would not extinguish this flame. Using a flare gun is like using a traditional firearm. Most flare guns come this way with your flares attached to the bottom of the flare gun. Simply take one of the flares out, put it in the cylinder, click it, and aim vertically in the air to fire. Also in the Coast Guard guidelines are sound producing devices like whistle, air horn, and bell. Now that we cover some of the Coast Guard guidelines, I'm going to show you some of the other safety gear that we keep on board. So this is our ditch kit, but it's also just where we keep all of our safety equipment. So it's in one place and we know where everything is. 
So I'm gonna start pulling stuff out like it's unboxing at Christmas over here. The first inside, this is a dry bag, of course, but I have another dry bag inside of it and I have some really important things in here. This is a GPS enabled personal locator beacon and it's water activated as soon as you go in and it shows your coordinates. And once you register it, it um, it's set for life. You don't have to do any kind of subscription for this. Andrea showed you some voice makers. So a horn, a whistle, which should also, the whistle should be attached to your life jackets, and also some beacons, some, some lights that are also water activated that should also be on your life jackets. We showed you flares, flare guns. I'm set for any flare emergency or for the 4th of July, but be sure to check the expiration on your flares every season. A handheld VHF radio that is waterproof and also floats. Some bottled water. First aid kit. Signal mirrors, which also can be attached to your life jackets. Something that people forget a lot is just various types of sunscreen and Tic Tacs for fresh breath. This by no means has every single thing that you could have in a safety bag slash ditch kit, but this is ours for now and it continues to be a building block. Again, have we covered every single boating safety precaution? Certainly not. We recommend this book you can get at West Marine. In fact, by law, every boat over 39 feet must have this book aboard. So get it, read it, and be prepared. And we'll see y'all soon.